ahead. I, I think uh, the statement reads that we will go to both local and international courts. So let us uh, appreciate that we have faith in the courts. However much the new Chief Justice is wobbling, but that's sorry for another day. Uh, but yes, we have confidence uh, in the local courts. And I think in the Kenyan jurisdiction, the only thing that has looked like has survived is the courts of Kenya. Uh, the parliament, you know, it died a long time. The executive is not so sure whether they want to uh, help NASA get back or uh, help OCA. So, so the executive is also not there. So it's only the courts of Kenya uh, that we have that are functional. Now, the point at which we plan to go to court is a point at which a postponement of the national general election that is supposed to be in August next year would occasion violence in the country. So it's after the fact of postponement, not before the fact. So that those of you who were in Kenya in 2007-2008, we appreciate that uh, the Kenyan election and African elections by extension are emotive. Uh, you already see where we are having right now uh, 493 Kenyans died of suicide, of stress, of depression. Many counties are suffering. The county of Siaya, the county of Homabay, the county of Kuali, the county of Mombasa are suffering thanks to grand corruption of various governors and misappropriation of funds. Most Kenyans want to have another chance at the elections on August uh, 9th next year. Postponing those elections, like we saw in 2007-2008, would occasion uh, political violence. You appreciate right now that in 2007-2008, Kenyans went to, some two Kenyans were taken, many Kenyans actually, seven of them, were taken to the International Criminal Court. Now, you appreciate that post-election violence issues border within the framework of those crimes that are triable within the International Criminal Court. One, as crimes against humanity. Two, as crimes of genocide. Three, as war crimes. Now, why are we saying local and international courts? Because even if you want to go and adjudicate or engage in issues of crimes against humanity or um, crimes of genocide, the international uh, criminal jurisprudence requires of you to exhaust local remedies. So we appreciate that exhaustion of local remedies is one act that you must also, first of all, show the international court that we are. So what we're telling the, the independent and electoral boundary commissioners is that one, they will be falling within the principles of uh, uh, international crimes, which are crimes against humanity, the crimes of genocide, should they be misusing their constitutional offices. Because that is the point. You only need to do is to show a causal link that the independent and electoral boundary commissioners abdicated their roles. The constitution empowers them to ensure that the elections are conducted without interference of anyone else. They are independent, and that is what the constitution says, that they're supposed to help protect the sovereignty of the country, that they're supposed to exercise constitutionalism. So, should we, for example, you know the reason why Africans and Kenyans by extension will go to war is because of a trigger. Should the postponement of an election trigger post-election violence, then the causal linkage, the causal uh, source will be the postponement of IABC, I mean the postponement of the election by IABC, and the commissioners should be held personally liable, and that is where they should know, that is the role that the constitution demands of them, that they should be independent in exercising their mandate, and they should be held personally liable for any violence, any crimes that arise out of the postponement of that particular election. I hope we've... Uh, justiciably executed your questions. Unless there are any other questions, I'm happy to yield to my colleagues.